not the I, longest I really, we've done in the past couple dude, of weeks, but I do. Yeah. I, I really want to be like, oh, come out as copyright strike bot and YouTube site called my sake. All right, we'll get you. <laughs> yeah. And welcome back to another Linux game, Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest <laughs> Linux gaming news, reviews, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. Yeah, man, we were just celebrating uh, how awesome Linux Park is uh, on the live stream. Anyway, I'm Vin Stone here in beautiful downtown Athens, Georgia, swishing the bits, doing everything under Linux, and joined uh, every week by our tame Canadian podcaster, um, half man, half bass. Uh, Jordan Svong and the doop, man doop. staying up late past his bedtime over in Britannia on the island loving Microsoft, uh, Pedro, Mateus, and together with you, Shat Realm Dynamic, Jordan is live, <laughs> helping us form Linux Voltron. <laughs> Have fun don't with you that. mean Li Linux Megazord? <laughs> Linux, I, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know where we're going with that. BSD we go lion. We like to see what's going on in each other's lives before we get going and play a little bit of catch up. No mustard. And uh, Jordan, you got the best story this week. So baby, take it uh, away. Okay. All right. All right. So I, gyms have been closed. I'm a power lifter. I have to get creative with my training. There's not a lot of heavy things I have ready access to. So I got, I got to take my exercise where I can get it. Um, I got a phone, I, I got a text from a friend of mine. They're like, yo, uh, you still pushing cars around? Uh, there's a lady on my parents' block who needs her car pushed up a driveway for whatever reason. I figured like whatever, there's a flat tire or the engine, what, right. whatever opportunity to go push a heavy thing, help an old lady out. Sounds like a plan. So we go there, we, uh, we get it up. This is like some Nissan sports car. It looks relatively new. Uh, like the, the, the neighborhood is like suburbia. So it's like middle class. Was folks. it like a big hill or it was a relatively steep driveway. Okay. It's it, it required, it required me and two other people to push it up. Um, and then we need to get it over like the lip. So that was anyway, anyways, the, all, all in all, it takes us about five minutes. Um, and then the lady's like, Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, boys. Sweet I got, bars. I got something <laughs> for you. And in her hand are books. Okay. Pedro, what books do you think these are? Uh, <laughs> really saucy uh <laughs> exactly where i went as like on, on a scale yeah. of one to sex like um, really saucy romance type novels <laughs> yo i um, thought they were bibles i thought she was gonna like pitch me the watchtower or some shit it's even better than that because apparently y'all have been missing out you don't know the true secrets of the universe because there is magical calligraphy that you can put in books that gives you power. It can, it's this new type of calligraphy. It can cure the deaf. And there's this guy, the deaf, the, no, the deaf, deaf. <laughs> the deaf, as in the heart, the heart of hearing people who cannot hear. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> this guy, th this dude, um, he's been doing this for years. Many of his students are, are neurosurgeons and quantum physicists, and he's just making shit go for them. Um, with the power of calligraphy. Now, in the little book she gave us, there's like the little calligraphy samples that we can trace to like tap into the power, but it's only the power that he put there because he's got the actual power and he's teaching people how to use it. You got to like go to his course. And she, she is a global trade securities expert. She's worked with prime ministers, multiples, multiple of prime course. ministers. And it, it's, it's cured her cancer. She had, she had lymphoma. She had lymphoma before she does not anymore. Um, it healed her sister <laughs> in the secrets of the ancient revealed. I have, I, I have seen through now, the matrix. We were discussing this on Thursday before we went live and I, <laughs> you brought up the thing of like, how do you play this? Because you're getting this exposition on this background. And you're like, is she going to run out and she's going to run out of steam and I'm going to get out or do I, do I need to? Oh, dude. To take the book for her to shut up. Oh, no, no. So I, I, I took the book because I was just like, oh, this is a Bible and it's not a Bible. Um, so she, she goes, she goes on and eventually she, she peters out. She runs out of steam because like maybe she figures her pitch isn't working or maybe I, I, I have no idea about the powerful calligraphy that cures cancer and COVID. 
Um, so we, we walked away and I, I, as, as we're walking to my friend's car, I'm like, what the fuck did you get me into? And he, he looks at me as like the second she started talking, my, my, my jaw dropped. I had no idea about <laughs> any of this. This is the same guy who I was moving rocks around with the other day. And there was that lady filming me. So I got to hang out with this guy more weird shit happens when we hang out. <laughs> yeah. and- that is exactly what I was like. You got to start filming. It just make sure you have that yes. camera but, but pulled up on the phone. So, so for for those of you who have not had the secrets of the ancients revealed to you, how was your week? Well, I like to imagine that you guys left in the background and the car was up and she got in the car, much like a real estate agent, like looked at herself in the rear view mirror as she was reversing it back down the hill and she's like, we'll get the next one, Becky. Yeah. <laughs> Terry, but yes. Terry. Close enough, man. <laughs> Dude, um, I'm probably getting ready to like wreck one of my acoustic guitars because I, I have a old old like 1900s um determined but i have one like from 95 it's a washburn dreadnought that i'm going to replace the uh saddle and the bridge on i've never done that before so i look forward to next week of going welp <laughs> I, I am down one acoustic guitar <laughs> right we're down to one and i'm doing that because i uh, do the interfacing linux and i always like to do a direct input and man i'm tired of like the one time you know he's like i'm going to start practicing again I can hear my noodle around for like 30 minutes and I'm like, okay, I'm not competent, but I can get through this without wholly embarrassing myself. But then my hands like all tired and my fingers are like, oh, they're hurting. It's kind of sad. Then you get in the shower the next morning. You're like, what? Why are you? Oh, right. I, uh, why can't I hold on to soap no anymore? <laughs> <laughs> so that's always a fun thing. I'm going to see if I can get that fixed up. So uh, yeah, got to practice. I'm looking forward to it. How about you, Pedro? Anything uh, new in your life? Well, uh, there was uh, the one thing uh, I saw the thing on boiling steam, and I figured, you know what? Let's just get a Dual Sense Five. Might as well get in early before the fakes start coming out. And uh, there is one way you can tell whether or not one of these are fake. It's the uh, little ribbing on the back. They're actually TD tidy squares, crosses, circles, and uh, triangles, like the face buttons. And uh, yeah, no, this one does have that so it would it will take a while before the uh, knockoffs start showing up with that kind of uh, ribbing but yeah it's it's actually a very nice controller it feels solid it feels much heavier than the uh, DualShock 4 uh, I have to say though boiling steam it's not X input ooh uh, out <laughs> dark souls 2 the original version the one without a uh, scholar of the first sin uh, that only takes X input. That's one of the limitations of the game, very much like the first Dark Souls before they re-released it. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, no, this doesn't work until I turn on Steam input, at which point, yeah, it works. But that's because Steam input just turns this into an Xbox 360 controller. So, Are, yeah. are you sure? And have, you, have, you, have you not tried calligraphy to turn it into X input? I hear that can be <laughs> no, anything no, possible. I, I, haven't, I haven't taken a Sharpie to it yet. No. That cures blindness, not hearing monster. <laughs> Don't use the runes for evil. <laughs> I was, I, yeah, I was, no, was going to say, everything like, else they said ben, is you should, pretty you should, you should use calligraphy to heal your hands. No. After, after you're done playing guitar. I was advised that, but no, no. Um, another thing that is surprisingly covered with tiny X's and O's is our horse. And I tried to remove oh, that, them one time, but then let me try to eat my toes. Well, that, that's the power of calligraphy. I drew those X's and O's on it, and now it's a horrible undead monster. It's the steam! Okay, so what were you squirreled out on, Pedro? Like, uh, I wasn't squirreled out on anything. I was waiting for you to say Linux. Monster. <laughs> I'm going to have to like use two calligraphy on you. <laughs> you gotta get you gotta get that brush out. Protect your neck. All right, man. Uh, let's talk about Proton 513. Dash 2, Steam's been on, well, Valve's been on a roll, man. They're um, keeping this updated and up to date. Uh, new hotness in this really is uh, VK d 3 d It's been rolled up to version 2.0, and that is the compatibility with Direct X 12 support. To which I'll say, man, I really need to try some of my DX12 titles because I'm, can't be alone. I'm just amazed that it works at all, much less like it works to the point already to where games are playable. Yeah. Um, I, I, yeah. I, I gave, I gave, I gave this one a try. I was, I was like, does this, does this launch the Assassin's Creed? I have to know. 
It, it, it doesn't. Um, one one thing it does do that'll make getting that up and running a lot handier is you can actually set a custom log directory now, so I can dump that too. I saw that Look. you were um, uh, you're like, oh, I pre-downloaded the uh, Nerd Holla and what more? Yeah. Nope. Uh. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm I'm waiting on that new Dix Fix baby or some GE shit. Yeah, uh, over here, the thing that stuck out to me was the um, fix for the Risk of Rain 2 multiplayer lobbies, which was one of the things that a lot of people were complaining about didn't work in Proton Land. I would so much very like um, Risk of Rain 2 to be Linux native, but uh, despite being Unity, the developers don't seem too open to the idea, and the previous game, it only showed up natively on Linux when Humble did it for them. So, yeah, they might still get my money, because I really like the first one, and the second one just looks to be the same, only in 3D. So, maybe when it's on sale and out proper, not in early access? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's there. It's updated. Go try it. And uh, do you think we're just going to have to wait on like a, you, I guess we'll be getting like a glorious egg roll version uh, for Valhalla, right? I imagine so. One would assume. Probably. Or <laughs> e e either that or like uh, Josh and the others have some stuff they need to work on for Dix Fix. Yeah, That's right. my best guess. Looking forward to it. But we do have I a new am. client update. Yeah, so uh, one of the things that came out from the uh, Dual Sense was that Steam kind of saw it as a generic uh, controller, and so Valve decided, you know what, let's just uh, add some initial support for the PS5 Dual Sense. Uh, uh, advanced features such as Rumble, Trackpad, and Gyro are not yet no. supported, Gyro. so they claim. Go ahead. Gyro. It's like it's like the kid <laughs> lamb. You put it on a pita. <laughs> Okay. Uh no. Uh the uh, <laughs> uh the uh yeah, no. The rumble is very much not supported. You do see uh if you go to the options in the uh Steam Big Picture mode, you do see the options for setting like the LED colors and turn rumble on or off and like the intensity and saturation of the LED colors. Those are there, but they don't work. Uh, so, yeah, it is very much initial support. Uh, they also uh, fixed some game manuals opening inside the Steam client instead of the browser, which I didn't think that was a problem, but <laughs> what do I know? And uh, they fixed blank UI windows appearing on startup on some systems. Yeah, they did. The, ol the only thing I saw about that uh, was the... Um, Whatever there was an update, the actual render, the, the window that would render the website that had the release notes, that was always blank. You had to click on it for it to go, oh, I'm supposed to be showing things. Okay. Oh, wait, wait you mean you mean the <laughs> window that pops up when you start Steam? When you're going to go click something else, but that window pops up directly under whatever Yay. the fuck you were going to? Yeah. It's like... <laughs> Why? Dude, uh, one of the things they also fixed, because, hey, it's a new controller series, is the uh, Xbox Series One X, X Controller X showing up as two separate controllers, so you don't, you no longer get value for your uh, controller purchase, you're back down to just having one. <laughs> that's, the, and, that's the secret for, like, the couch-only multiplayer games, is now you can just control both guys at the same right? time. <laughs> oh, man, it's advanced. And, uh, after seeing uh, Ben Heck's teardown of the new Xbox One X thing that is genuinely the same controller he's like no e even like the agnostic pads test pads are the same it's like all the pinouts the same so they put another button on it but i do believe with this latest update jeb can fix it 2020 has the most pertinent question which is still no blast processing question mark <laughs> <laughs> you gotta work on that valve you gotta work on that um <laughs> Have you ever wanted to play co-op with swords? I have. I'm excited Definitely. for this. <laughs> it's, it sounds amazing. And as long as I don't have to play it IRL with swords, I'm fine. Uh, Blade Symphony. Uh, they have a free to play patch number three released. This is one of those games that was like in early access. Um, it ate shit. It, they, they, they freely cop to like this game was bad on release, but we've been working on it. It's a lot better now. Um, we're trying to write the course. It's got that online multiplayer and it's on Linux and it's free. So I think maybe we want to do a little bit of this in the after show. Just I to, like, think it's built using, our source. Well, yeah, I was about to say it's a using source. Uh, have you even launched it, Jordan? I have not. That's why you still want to play it. Um, ah, it does yeah. not. Well then that <laughs> is oh, a oh, goddamn it works. it works, but that, that's why it's like, you haven't even tried the tutorial. If you still want to play it. 
Uh, I don't know. I, th- I think running around trying to cut our chat realm stuff. The, the concept of it sounds wonderful until you like just the go ex- into the tutorial bot, and you're like, what? Botched execution. Yeah. No, this is like, <laughs> yeah. hey, you have, how, you have 100 plus keys on your keyboard? Okay, let's use all of them ah. to start. <laughs> In this simple, yeah, no, that yeah. wasn't good. <laughs> I played through the tutorial and nothing else because that was a slog to get through. And yeah, no, uh, the key bindings were awful. I've always wanted to play like a spectacle uh, multiplayer fighter, like Devil May Cry, but multiplayer would love something like that. The, 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 no, <laughs> in the trailer, they made this look very much like that. It's like you just pick a sword and then you have these awesome aerial fights and it's amazing. No, mm. uh, I hope I hope this update kind of nails that down because it was terrible. <laughs> no, it's got a um, I mean, good work. I'm glad they're updating it, but um, it, it it's one of those it's, games it's, it's, it's got its dense. base man yeah so <laughs> it's a commitment but hey it's priced to sell it's free go try it yourself man and um when you're done with that you can cut the commentary track on half-life alex i mean if you paid for uh vive or a uh, rift or whatever um but yeah they uh released an update for half-life alex it has three hours of developer commentary how it works is you enable it and then when you go to some random spots in the map the developers will chime in and be like oh by the way this is with blah 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 and this is also how you solve this puzzle ha 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 sucks to be you no um yeah so there's about 127 points in the game where you'll get this sort of feedback i don't know have any of you really felt the urge to replay a game with commentary enabled i personally have not i to answer your question directly i'm unaware of any games that i own with commentary uh um, half-life lost coast I'm unaware of any good games that I have with commentary. <laughs> that was so how they email. explained how they did the software implementation for I, HDR okay. I back could, in 2000. I could definitely roll that back one board notch, Pedro. Um, game, uh, I said games, not tech demos. <laughs> Either, okay, either way, you can send, we, we got a hate mail segment. You can you can send us some hate mail about how developer commentaries are the best thing ever mm-hmm. and that we're a bunch mm-hmm. of uneducated chuds. I think I wouldn't mind it, man, um, especially playing through in like a VR experience. I'm like, oh, oh, that's why you did that. OK, that makes sense. That tracks. Oh, yeah, it, it could it could definitely be interesting. But again, it's one of those things where I'd probably want to experience it by proxy rather than like. I don't know. If, I, if I'm going to play Alex, I'm going to like go through the main campaign. I'm not going to turn developer commentary on, and I'm not going to play it a second time. Uh, Linux Nero made a point, man. Uh, Portal 2 has it, so I might go back and check that. But you got to imagine, man, if you drop the coin on like your uh, VR setup, you're looking for an excuse to replay. Oh, yeah, just give me content. It, Any right? content. Yeah. Oh, God, please. <laughs> <laughs> I've so pl- replayed Alex for the past 300 years. I don't know. <laughs> um... Pedro, you live streamed um, Proteus a while back. And I did. You ran into some uh, crashing issues. I, <laughs> I ran into a lot of crashing until I changed the Proton version. Uh, but yes, Proteus, it's uh, it's now out in early access. So uh, temper your expectations. It's it, it's basically the exact same uh, preview that they had. It's just available for everyone now, and you get to pay to play it. Uh, it's uh, it's an old school a type looking first person shooter um but yeah it is very much in the old uh, duke nukem style uh doom first person shooter of the olden days and yeah Pedro, no, there Pedro, was, uh, i'm seeing an issue here yes there is no linux version or mac version at this oh. point because well yeah the, the the build had issues it is a unity game uh and i saw the unity crash thingy <laughs> show up um uh, during the stream because yeah no the game crashed a couple of times until i started using the proton version so yeah it it is a unity game but there is currently no early access version uh for linux i can tell you that proton works yes but i'm not paying 20 pounds to play that in proton no i'll wait for the i want to say where exactly do we land on this i mean should we say they did a good knowing that they're um tap export button on the Linux version was buggy and very crashy. Mm -hmm. Is that a good thing, Jordan? I mean, should we like, okay, well, I mean, I mean, we, 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 they can be doing a good thing and a bad thing at the same time. Yeah. They probably should have tested it on like a Linux machine before pushing that out. (laughs) But yeah, you know, copying to and being like, Oh no, it's just the fact that Linux is bad. um, Well, what they released was a 
closed pre-alpha. Right. Like we were, we got access to it, but I I don't, I don't, I don't know at this, at this point, it's a really, really low bar to jump over, but I mean, I I can appreciate it when it happens, right? Like, yeah, I'm done. As long as they keep good on it, how much is it currently? Um, Peter? Right now it is it's, uh, twenty eight ninety nine nineteen nineteen ninety nine Canadian nineteen forty nine 1949 here in the UK. My question <laughs> is this: Have they added more to it? Because if it's that, that that's yeah, a big those ask, three levels little, in the preview. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Wish them the best of luck. Look forward to the native version. But um, a while back, we played a game. I don't think we really expected to get too much joy out of. It was a bridge constructor portal. We're like, oh, how could, you know, they sent us some copies for review. I'm like, yeah, I guess we'll take a look. Turned out it was kind of fun. Like, yeah, yeah. it had its sense of humor <laughs> to it. And even though you were doing the bridge, you're just like, yeah, this is fun. Okay. I, yeah, it's like I was a, talking some ad smack and yeah. It's, it's a cynical tie-in, but hot damn, is it a good cynical tie-in? Like, it's right. well done. Mm-hmm. 100%. Well, in the same vein, Coral um, is back for La Bridge Constructor, The Walking Dead, man. Uh, Norman Reedus. And Chal- yeah, no creepy Where's fetus. fetus? Yeah. <laughs> it's not available. But I don't know, man. I'm looking at this and I'm seeing like um, hordes of zombies running after them. So is this going to have like a Lemmings vibe to it? Maybe. Sort of. I, uh, I saw the developer play it because Steam insists on putting that in my face, so I decided, you know what, let's just sit and watch. Uh, and yeah, you uh, have to save the humans, so you have a number of survivors in any level. And you also have a horde of zombies. And basically the point is to get the humans to one of the safe points without the zombies being able to follow them. So, save the humans, kill the zombies. So you're encouraged to build some uh, shaky ass bridges, <laughs> st- st- stuff that would survive a couple people walking over it, but not. Yeah, there. Uh, yeah, like it, it could be fun. Again, again, we we did not think much of the original bridge. Con- I gotta bridge say, to their portal, credit, but- they've definitely put us like we we're, we're stepping back. We're like. Well, we got to try it, Could I be? guess. Right. Yeah. You surprised like, us with the portal thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, n- n- now that I understand how they implemented the portal thing, like now the gears are turning. Okay. They could easily adapt this to like zombie survival or whatever. And yeah, it's, it's a fun little gimmick as long as they're not charging ridiculous amounts of money for it, it which I mean, t- no, it's, it's, 10 compl- bucks. it's reasonably priced and we're yeah. looking at something like that. I mean, it's always nice to see because they could have cheaped out and just made like a effectively skin pack for it, texture pack. And they didn't do that with Portal, so I'm going to assume. And plus, they've added the zombie mechanic in this, so they know how to make a game. I'll give them credit. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah we'll that, see. That they got they got the core down, and now they're just kind of riffing on the idea. And I think that that's especially if you're going to be pricing out the ten dollar price point, that's like a good way to experiment and get some more games out. Correct. Um, uh, we get to uh, rage. We get to talk about this because we accidentally beat Wolfenstein finally, and so we had a celebration in Sabai because something came out. Yes. Uh, so thanks to the lovely, lovely, sexy flippity jibbity bibbida bibbida boo, uh, we have Streets of Rage 4. It's out on Linux natively. It's done via FNA, and it works pretty damn well. Uh, like Ben was saying, he and I played it on Thursday. We got through, I think, the first two levels. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, it's a pretty box standard beat em up. Once again, the real challenge here is making sure you're on the same line as your enemy so that you don't punch error. But I mean, yeah, um, this is the same network uh, code that. Wait a minute. You know, Does this thing have a pixel mode? Apparently. Oh, yeah. Okay. We, we Fli- Fli- well, for the main that. characters, at least. <laughs> Flippin did a pretty good job of that with uh, Wonder Boy, where like you can split switch between like the original version and the uh, and the remastered version on the fly. Right. I don't know if you can do that here, but I, I mean, FNA is a very flexible tool. It's magic and it's available now. Um, it's a little pricey. It's. 30 bucks, but it's 30% off right now. Um, it's a fairly well done port. And I think we're probably going to spend a little bit more time dicking around with it at some point. Uh, absolutely, man. Uh, getting into it. Uh, we recorded, uh, you want to go over at linescamecast.com and you want to see some of that hot, effectively 21 minutes of us going, what does this button do? Oh, this button, try this button. Oh, wait, that <laughs> takes health. And then Mm-hmm. Then you're shilling way too early. That doesn't baby, start until the next baby, segment. <laughs> baby, I, I'm trying to educate the people on the fine, fine stylings of us. Uh, you can always check us out live, but you're already here at Twitch. You know that. Uh, we had a good time with it, I think. Mm-hmm. 
for sure. Yeah, I, I, I quite enjoyed it. I'm not the biggest fan of beat em ups, but it's well done. <laughs> I would like it's I would like a good. deeper understanding of like how to actually do some of the moves that I was doing. That's but... what we got to go back and play with, though, man. Uh, right. Getting online was relatively straightforward. You got to start the game, then it's boom, boom, instantly connected. And coming from uh, Wolfenstein, a young blood. It's oh, like, oh what we just do that and it has experimental vulcan support yes that's Ooh. right kids there's a vulcan button to play around with for your 2d brawling game and that to my point makes me happy i love seeing yeah. stuff like that and i was like that's overkill huge fan indeed all right coming up next more shilling big ram numbers and a very very suspicious update And, well, uh, this is around the time where uh, we take a bit of a break from the news. It was uh, about well, that time I realized the sea monster <laughs> only had six gigabytes. That was yes, out of video that's memory. Ven's GPU. Uh, mine has eight and Jordan's has ten? Ten. Eleven? Ten. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Enough for it so, doesn't yeah. matter. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> My but yeah, no, we is need to bigger than take yours. A, we need to take a, a bit of a break uh, from the Linux news to, uh, well, thank you, all of you who are watching us and uh, decided it was a good idea to uh, kick us a few shackles. I mean, that's, except that's, for Craig. Uh, <laughs> Craig Christ? Yeah, he's a punk. I, I don't mind Craig our, so much. He turned, he turned my water into Coors Light, and I don't want to Cold drink that. Coors Light, man. <laughs> Fucking Craig. Get watch out for I him. mean, I'd ra- I, okay, I, I'd rather it be cold Coors Light than warm Coors Light, because at least you can choke that down. But, I don't know. If you want to help... That, that's against, like, the Geneva Convention, man. That's yeah. yeah. If, if you want to help Craig <laughs> afford some better beers for us, you can head on over to patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast and sub to us. Uh, you get some cool benefits like the we don't have a we don't have the beer review podcast anymore. That was a fixture of old LGC, yeah. but not a, not not anymore. Right now, you just get access to our discord access to the pre pre super shows and which is an extra what hour of Linux game content. Dude, where we like it's especially basically the Mandalorian the, Discovery podcast for the next couple months, especially <laughs> in these times when you're sitting at home and you're like hey man i gotta work from home and all that fun stuff or i need like like this the entire four hour rock block that we do of this is available you get a custom rss feed like jordan was saying and just boom you get the audio version so you can rock out with us and uh play along but if you just want to there's a video around, version too yeah full video version yes. you'll get it tomorrow morning early along with this show you get this show about three hours early anyone nice. else yeah yeah, uh, some other Patreon benefits include uh, access to the show notes. You can suggest stories, you can make corrections, or you can buy your way onto the show if you want to drop us a bunch of money. No one's taking us up on it, but it's there. It's available. <laughs> you want to do it. Um, we got some uh, speaking speaking of Patreons. If you have been following our Young and Blood series, uh, you're going to get the conclusion. Soon. I made the mistake of looking up. Uh, it is currently available for patrons. I went ahead and posted ah, that. So head ah. over uh, there if you want to see us. We finally beat the final boss in Young and by, uh, Wolfenstein. By walk around in circles. Walk this, around in this circles. This was all uh, the fault of Aldius, who uh, like, okay, I'll take you up on that. So I roped Jordan into it. And we keep our promises, man. Uh, Lannister pays our debts. And uh, not us. We get the Lannisters to do it, man. Um, but... <laughs> I also posted today. there's a preview video for it. If you follow my interfacing Linux series where I'm trying to like, you know, trick the kids into coming over to Linux, like, Hey, we can do some audio stuff really cheap. I got the cheapest interface I could get on eBay. Cause somebody asked on YouTube, like, Hey, does this thing work? And I'm like, Hey, you know what? Let me grab one. We're going to find out that video is up. Uh, that's not the finished version. There's another segment where I tear it apart and that's going to be fun. That's going to be in the final version, but the, the gist of it so if you like watching those that's available and probably next friday they'll be out for everyone with all the benchmarks and stuff like that because of some of the cray cray stuff i do uh we gotta thank mirror because we got twitch we do. if you're a sub on twitch you can also hop in the discord right we will definitely yep. dom you <laughs> If you are our son. <laughs> you get Discord access if you subscribe to us on Twitch. And Mir decided, you know what? Let's just do a 14 month resub because yeah. <laughs> so you thank know, you. But, thank you very much. But you know what? Say you want say you want a physical token of your LGC fandom. We got a store store out the next gamecast.com. We got t-shirts, we got stickers, we got hoodies, fanny pack soon, underwear, yeah. maybe also There's soon. The page load. There it is. Ha. Yeah. Ha ha. <laughs> Terrifying. Get some Hell Elks shirts. Get some Frank File shirts. We got stickers. You can cover up naughty words. What's like less than naughty? And do 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 we, do we have the pelvis shirt yet? Do we have a design? No. Mm-hmm. Oh. Ah. <laughs> okay. Let me tell you the biggest problem with the design with the uh, pelvis. 
sure right. is that it's so dead simple to do it. It's one of those things where like, you just need to sit down for five minutes and do it. No, and it's just like, you know, yeah. you don't want to get started yeah, on it. Yeah, I, 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 I can, I can do that whenever I feel like it. And it's just, right. it's, it's that we'll have it <laughs> okay. in time for the holidays. Maybe we'll make that part of our, um, Thanksgiving hail Santa, uh, 2020 edition. Yeah. Uh, speaking of buying stuff, we got uh, we got some pages on Amazon. We got an affiliate link you can follow. We get some money from that sometimes. Um, and yeah, if you if you want to you know kick us some you know physical property, we have wish list. Pedro and I. You can buy me a gimp mask. You can buy Pedro also a gimp mask. Gimp mask for <laughs> there isn't one on my wish list. Yeah. But why uh, isn't there? <laughs> I can add one. <laughs> Do it. Bring out the gimp mask, and we we can watch them as they try to do an entire episode wearing it, and hopefully they'll asphyxiate. It'll be brilliant. It'll be lovely. Oh man, I will, I'm, I'm still. My I'm, money's I'll make still sure on. to add one without the ball gag. <laughs> my money's my yeah. money's still on my face not fitting into it. So, dude, we'll make it. We'll, we'll cut some sutures at it. And uh, hey, Kentucky there's jelly, a fine, upstanding cannibal wall. If you pick up for anything, uh, pick up anything in our studio and help us out with uh, some of the stuff we do, because we appreciate the kindness. Of, I can't say strangers because we'll get to know you real quick um that's there's a list for that uh for the studio wish zone with boring cables and stuff like that but we need to get right in to the news after the, the furries shameless self-promotion bye-bye shilling penguin you're Aww. too beautiful for this world. <laughs> speculations well, uh, and rumors yes uh the moment you see wccf tech you need to grab the bag of solve because it's probably not going to be enough speculations of and rumors rampant just speculation. right enough to where you have to give it a mention though right i actually yeah. have a bag of salt if you had warned me ahead of time i would have started munching on salt right now <laughs> Yeah, but no, this is about the supposed uh, RTX 3080 Ti, name unconfirmed, obviously, uh, which may or may not be coming in uh, January 2021 to compete with the um, 6900 XT. Uh, so, yeah, it is basically at this point just people making guesses at uh, what nvidia may or may not be releasing and there's that table there that shows that the supposed rtx 3080 ti will share most uh specs with the rtx 3090 at which point people who bought the rtx 3090 would be going god damn it nvidia again pedro uh, pedro, pedro mateus Let's be the honest. definition of insanity is repeating the same honest, action. Pedro, the type of people who just bought a 3090 will just buy one of these two. <laughs> probably. They'll pro- they'll I mean, probably if you spend $1,500. So I mean, here, here's my impression of somebody that <laughs> bought 3090. A penguin, he has one. <laughs> yeah. He'll just do that again. <laughs> but yeah, it's, uh, it is... Rampant speculation. Uh, there's uh, no confirmation from NVIDIA on anything regarding the 3080 Ti, even if it is at all real. Uh, it is, yeah, it is just the internet being the internet. There is a um, <laughs> attempt at pricing in the uh, little, the very same table. Uh, it, they say it's uh, 899 but there's a big fat question mark in front of it, which means that's all made up bullshit, so... We don't actually know. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I don't. I don't. I don't know. Like, if if they're if they're gonna be like putting out a TI model and they've already set the pricing, I was already expecting the like um, thirty ninety to go for like fifteen hundred dollars or like more like two thousand dollars. So I think they're serv- saving that price slot for like whatever the Titan is with forty <laughs> gigabytes of GDDR seven <laughs> and the blowjob machine. Yeah, this is pr- this is probably going to be like a three and a half. It, it, or how, how much memory is on this card again? Sufficient. Uh, supposedly 20 gigs. 20, 20, 20 gigs? So it's actually going to be 19.5 gigs. <laughs> Dude. Uh, all I'm going to say is this, man. Um, all of the AMD cards uh, being launched with 16 gigs uh, kind of made NVIDIA look like a hot punk with all their 8 gig offerings. They're like, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, hey, 8 gigs, how much is that again? 700 by 8 gigs, baby, come on. 8 gigs good enough for anyone. It's like Intel with quad cores until AMD's like, mm-hmm. boom, all the cores, bitches. <laughs> so maybe they can do what they've done, um, but what I'm interested in, what I'm interested in, this is from PC Gamer. All this is going to be in our show notes after the fact at linuxgamecast.com, but prepping a 3060 with more VRAM 
than an RTX 3080. Can it? Uh, NVIDIA's roadmap has dropped and changed faster. 10 gigs for 3060. <laughs> Which would, well, not 10, 12, I'm sorry. Eh, bzz, learn to read, old man. Uh, I'm very, very fucking excited about this because there's no way in Tartarus that this will ever see the light of day. Source, I really want one. Then again, <laughs> video cards like rolled back in. They were able to confirm the updated NVIDIA roadmap. So you know, if you can give me a four hundred dollar uh, thirty sixty, that can kind of game, and it's got twelve gigs for my video editing and all the other fun stuff that I need it for, and bonus points, bonus points. If it is not 05 percent faster than a ten eighty Ti, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I want to live in this universe, and please, oh please, Nvidia, show me what you have to do once AMD, aka Player Two, has entered the game. I mean, yeah. if, if, if I mean, if the ERAM is the new EP, and I'm curious to see what kind of fucky models like EVGA and MSI will come up with, like, oh, we grab more RAM on there. I don't know, because like personally, I'm still stuck with my 1080 Ti at least for another generation. But this gives me some insane shit to look forward to. I'm like, oh yeah, no, I, I, I waited a year, and now you can just get the $200 card with 24 gigs of GDDR6. Because why not? Yeah, and the 3060 uh, and the 3060 Ti are also in that same bullshit table in the WCCF tech article. Uh, so, yeah, to take all of that <laughs> with all the grains of salt, uh, the 3060 Ti they do uh, in the WCCF tech table, they have uh, 8 gigabytes of GDDR6. So, that... 12 gig seems to be a bit of a stretch and between video cards and WCCF tech, they Pedro, both have a very make sense. track record. It doesn't make sense until even the low end version of the new ver um, 6,000 series all have 16. I, yeah. I, 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 I legit thought you were going to be like, look at the monkey. Look at the cinema monkey. <laughs> but the, um, sorry, what was that? Was no, like depending <laughs> on the performance numbers, I, the 1080 has been doing really well. See, and both of you, I, both I, of you can eat glorious bags of dicks because you do not have a 2060. <laughs> I can't yes. play Quake 2. I know it breaks my heart. This is the one thing I have on YouTube. <laughs> you I can play Quake. Literally, those 10 FPS in uh, Quake 2 RTX. Yes, 10. <laughs> 20 whatever listen listen <laughs> i i keep spending money and amd's like oh by the way here's some new shit just in time for you to have bought the old shit so right. i'm mm -hmm. fucked either way it doesn't matter but you walk into situations like that i mean uh, you you've computed you, you didn't spend a couple right? of years waiting on the uh <laughs> I, amd I, trade <laughs> i did and let's be honest I, you caught us all off guard with a 1080 ti like, huh? i did i'm yeah. like oh tax return <laughs> fuck it light that shit yep. on fire right <laughs> um hey man uh lutris has got a new version not 0.5.8 and uh that nerd responsible he's here in shit room dynamic he pretty. is and i'm gonna call him a uh, fat stupid smelly nerd because assassin's creed still doesn't fucking work <gasps> um yeah they uh but not 5.8 is out it came out four hours ago according to the github um you can now in uh you can no longer import games that has been removed entirely the notion of importing games from another service not a thing anymore. Um, you can um, you can load games from Steam API. Uh, what was the two things I put down? There's a new runner format. You can now add runners as JSON as opposed to like a Python style code, and uh, you cannot import shit no more. So that's kind of, that's kind of the big ones. Um, I don't know. I guess Mango HUD as an option as well. Maybe. Man, Strider's <laughs> just getting so mad. So I'm, so I'm going to say this is upgraded to the newest version of Jython, so you're going to have to update your JVM oh, nice. in order to run it. And um, I'll oh, also oh, make sure I, to run I, it uh, as root. I, so. I, exactly, and I heard it's now um, out-of-the-box compatible with the Nintendo PowerPad. Excellent. <laughs> well, there is one thing. Uh, Strider, uh, a couple of days ago, posted the link on Discord. It's like, oh, this is a release candidate. Uh, go on, download it, test it. So I downloaded it, I tested it, and I found an issue, which I told Strider. I guess what hasn't been fixed on the, uh, the actual hang on, stable Hang on, release. hang on, let, let me see if I can guess. The one issue that only you reported like three days ago? Yes. 
Okay. <laughs> yeah. Is, is Apparently, I'm the only one that, that uh, yeah. bothers well, well, to create desktop shortcuts for Lutris and Salt games. I don't, I don't know, Ben. It's it's not it's not like he has to go and rename a well, header file. We need to bring this out. Um, Strader does point out that in chat it has proper integration with GOG and Humble, so no more improper integration. And there's not, like yes. uh, it can communicate better with a web zone. I believe that was in the notes. Yeah, uh, there. Yes. Uh, he changed the way that uh, a lot of the uh, installs work. If you have, say, a game already installed, uh, you can launch it from Lutris, but it will apply the exact same settings that it would have from the install script on the website. But if there isn't an install script on the website, if it can find it, it will still run. <laughs> I have an idea literally just occurred to me as Pedro was talking. Every time we have a Lutris update, we should have Strider come on and we should give him about 15 seconds to summarize as best as he can what the update is before we cut away from him and never talk about it again. 13. See if he can. Yes. <laughs> sure. Um, we, 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 can, we can dial in the number. I'm just saying we got to give him like very, very tight window. If I had see what thought he about it, we could have just pulled him in and like, I'm like, hey, call me. Uh, here's another thing I want to give it a mention. Lutris will not delete any game folder that is used by another game or any folder that is in some predefined location. Note that protection of folders such as documents and downloads only works on English locales for the moment, because apparently that was an issue. Like people were like, hey, man, why is it deleting folders or not deleting folders or something like that? It's trying to detect when Pedro is using it so that it deletes all these folders. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one who doesn't have an English locale set on the uh, if you said in Portuguese, it just randomly generates dot folders in your home. That yeah. says brilliant. I mean, dot folders, I don't care. I don't see those. Uh, it's the stupid ones that are visible, especially a lowercase one snap. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but all of this seems a little sus. It's a, it's a little sus. We may, 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 maybe we need to like check the code a little bit. So this is the open sus uh, dev log number four. They're working on their own little version of uh, Among Us, Ultimate Vampire Mafia, whatever the hell you want to call it. Uh, they're working on a reverse engineered open source version of it. Um, and the big update now is they have their art done. They have their little little bean men's. Uh, there's they have various hats and hairdos and bow ties. Right now, it looks like it's taken a bit of a murder on the Orient Express type vent, which, you know, it's classic murder mystery. It's a good setting for your uh, suspicion game. Um, yeah, so that that's that's going on. Uh, they're still doing a lot of the initial game design uh, about like what exactly like the roles of the uh, the, the people versus the traders are. Um, and work is still ongoing, so it's good to see updates on that. We're just, we're keeping a real close eye on it, because this is, I feel this will dominate the after show once it's, like, remotely playable. Yes, uh, and we're also looking at it because, you know, we, we were sitting back because the three of us know full damn well, like, do not burn a heretic purchase on an online game because mm -hmm. uh rocket league right rocket Fall league Fall guy. <laughs> he's any, anything with the potential to easy anti cheat let, let me back that back we understand rocket league does not have eac yet but it will just give it down it, it will it's also not supported online with linux anymore you can yeah. play local only they and that's removed it that so yeah we're looking forward to that looking forward to playing it and uh Good on that lot. I mean, uh, they've went from like, hey, we got an idea to, hey, we got some game design to, hey, now we're getting some art. So it looks like a thing that's going to be a real, real boy, but. Riggedy real. We got an Atari VCS. It's a thing. It's a VCS adjacent, at least. It's the vault of 100 uh, games optimized for the Atari VCS. Uh, it is to literally optimized for the Steam Box. I don't know. Yes, probably. Uh, it is. Yeah, it is uh, a list of 100 games that will be available uh, for free for people who bought a VCS or um, you'll be able to buy 50 games uh, in I think it's five dollar chunks. So yeah, it is just a hundred Atari games. You know, the look at all these graphical the video game industry like, in nineteen eighty three. Yeah, uh, uh, <laughs> Did that, does it ship with ET though, or do you have to go into the <laughs> desert to find that? Dude, ET better yeah. be built in. That better be the pack in. <laughs> well, I, I mean, like, yes, yeah, like, oh, 100 games for your brand new console. Yeah, but they're like shitty Atari games that you can play in a browser yeah. just as well. Yeah, you see, right? that's like, the problem. They showed some, like, screenshots of, like, some reimagined, but, you know, they were still using, like, the core Atari graphics, mm -hmm. but they really, 
you know, vectored it up and made it look right. Nice. Right. This, so, this, this is a shit that was like 101 games that came on a CD back in 1994. Does anyone no, have no, 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 any no. nostalgia for Atari it, games? Because it didn't even come I, on a CD. It came with the joystick <laughs> that you plug into the television and you can control oh, it with that. Oh, oh no, baby. The CD came before that. Oh, no, no. Yeah. Wrong, 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 wrong. <laughs> But yeah, I, I remember, uh, like, the oldest console I ever played was the uh, Philips Video Pack. Uh, you may know it as the uh, Magnavox Odyssey. Um, and, yeah, that I plugged it in a few years back, and I tried, <laughs> I did my best to play some of the games for the three or four cartridges that I had at the time. And, no. <laughs> we were talking. My roast we were- didn't... We were My talking. roasted glasses only go back to like um, Master System. That's it. That's that's <laughs> the whole thing. I mean, I was talking earlier in the pre pre super shows, and I'm like, why are the kids these days wanting to build like 486 retro gaming PCs? And it went. Stick with me. I think it boils down to like uh, same thing with Atari because both Pedro and I, the like, Atari was over and done with by the time we were you know young. You know, conscious, right? For like, <laughs> when, when, when I was born. By the time we knew what a video game was, uh, f- feel free to take that out of context, right? Everyone knows what I'm doing. Um, the, Stop playing with your joystick. Playing with my joystick. <laughs> uh, but by the time that we played the Atari, you know, the age of five, six, we're like, this is, this is, this is crap. <laughs> Give me a Nintendo. Um, mm-hmm. I, I kind of feel like I think the big market for this is people like oh i never experienced the atari and they're all collector you know the the people on youtube buy them now and hoard them for and, for, for unboxing videos yeah and shit like that so like speaking I speaking of unboxing this. videos stay tuned to the linux <laughs> gamecast youtube channel then has a special one for you coming up oh i do yeah the unboxing of the thing you're saying you're talking about it oh that's in the video yeah we're talking yeah, about the yeah. plug segment yeah, yeah go watch that if you're a patron um uh, stick around till friday uh so we gotta talk about this Ooh, the elephant in the room i have an elephant man um this is the music related copyright claims and twitch from twitch you might have heard of them we're currently on it creators we hear you <laughs> I got, i'm just gonna read these first two paragraphs okay all right go for mm-hmm. it. your frustration and confusion with recent music related copyright issues is completely justified things and should things and should yeah, it should be better. All right. For creators, uh, and they've been recently, and by then they're talking about, uh, delete all your VODs, fuck you, that's why. Uh, and this post outlines our next steps to get there. Moving forward, we'll be more transparent with what's happening, what tools and resources we're building to help. Um, copyright law and the DMCA, it's big and spooky. It says not simple topics. Uh, we'll do our best to keep the legalese to a minimum, though there are bound to be some technical terms here and there. Okay, so we, we keep on reading into this. Um, we're going to try to summarize it a little bit. Basically, here's, here's the um, TLDR version. Twitch in this post comes out and goes, hey, you know, over the years, we, we get um, DMCA request, and, you know, it's always just been like a little handful. We just go and take care of it. Over multiple years, the, whole, the entire time YouTube's just been dealing with this shit left and right for, you know, at minimum five years. And so minimum. they're like, hey, man, it's always just been a handful. And all of a sudden there was this big flood. And how could we have predicted that they would come after us, too? We're just little old Twitch owned by a billion dollar Amazon. Amazon. Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> we, we couldn't have seen this coming guys. So that's why we've never bothered to build the tools and infrastructure to deal with something like this. I mean, we're just little old twi- get fucked. Um, yeah. Uh, eat a bag of dicks on that one, Twitch. I'm just going to say, don't, don't try to spin this man, because like you, even the deleted VODs right now, people are going back and getting copyright strikes on them because they're not actually deleted. They're just off your page. When you go back and delete them, they're still sitting on your servers. Um, here's the issue, man. Here's the issue. They don't have a system in place right now to even show users, uh, like, yeah. like us, we don't, we don't do copyrighted music. <laughs> this doesn't affect us because between the three of us, we've learned better. We've learned our lessons a long time ago. But even if you do have a strike and they've issued, they don't have the tools in place to tell you on what video. Like, so their suggestion is 
delete all years and years of your VODs, like if you're a Twitch partner and all that fun stuff like that. I'm sure we will not have to worry about that after this stream. But how do you know? Uh, okay, here's here's a real legitimate issue for somebody that's been doing streaming online for a decade, okay? Before Twitch existed, we were streaming on Justin TV, all right? We've been around, man. Um, you got to realize how many false claims I currently get on our YouTube channel, man. Each month. Bullshit claims. Like, I spent, Pedro knows this, I spent two solid months fighting Netflix because Netflix was determined to monetize our video weekly, daily Wednesdays because I do uh, Stranger Things like credits for our patrons, you know, at the end. And I, they were, they were like, no, that's an episode of Stranger Things. Give us all your money from that. I'm like, no, it's, it's not. I, two times I had to go to war with them. Two separate times. Bullshit bots claiming stuff like that. But at least I had the tools on YouTube. And they're like, hey, it's on this video and this from this company. And hey, the claims for this between here and here. I'm like, oh, 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 that's bullshit. Let me go fight that, which I did successfully twice. Now, here's the thing, man. Um, I've even had, like last month, I had a just a random company tried to do a claim on uh, some background music that we're playing, you know, like on a live and uncut episode, which, which you're watching now, if you're watching live and they're like, yo, uh, we own this song. So we need to monetize uh, we'd, all the money from this video. Mm -hmm. I went, you know, again, I had the tools from YouTube. I went there and I'm like a segment and I listened to it. I'm like, <sighs> so then I pulled up VLC and went through and I'm like, uh, oh, oh, do you know where I got this song? Other company. Yeah. I got it from YouTube's audio library that they give to streamers. Uh, P.S. Get fucked. Be happy to see you in court. Um, <laughs> pretty much that, man. Now, my point being, man, people are mass deleting their VODs. And that sucks, especially since there's a very good chance at least 30 or 40% of them is bullshit claims. It's just bots being bots, man. These things are not dialed in at all. But you have no way of knowing. And the only safe thing you can do as a Twitch partner is just wipe everything and twitch is like hey we didn't know uh no that's not a good excuse now twitch doesn't have the system in place to like uh so companies like on youtube like they were coming in they're like hey wait wait you got some copyrighted stuff but i'll tell you what i'll tell you what we're just gonna take all the money or maybe, maybe we're just gonna get taste of the money on there and mm -hmm. that happens. You'll have like shared revenue or you'll just have like, oh, we're just going to take everything. But you know what? Keep the video up. Keep it playing. Just keep keep them pennies and quarters coming in for us. Twitch doesn't have a system like that for the companies filing these claims. So, uh, yeah, if you've streamed like one minute of uh, like Rocket League, we were on the menu for one minute. The CD baby or whoever it was wanted all four hours of that video just for them. That system doesn't exist on Twitch, man. So they're filing these claims and saying, Twitch, you got to get this shit off here yesterday because we can't monetize other people's work because we have false claims or legitimate claims too. Let's be honest, man. How many times have you went to a Twitch stream? And I know the three of us, we do understand. I'm sure you at home do too. And they're playing. You're like, man, I wish I could just random Spotify. Yeah. Uh, yeah. With all like, actively licensed music. Exactly. From we would have a year. much yeah. better soundtrack. <laughs> Um, if that was an option, what are your thoughts on this gentleman? Yeah. Like, yeah. No, uh, uh, right. you know, go ahead. go ahead. Okay. Uh, the big one is you're not telling the streamers, uh, which VODs are affected. You're not telling them which content uh, that supposedly was uh, hit with the DMCA. You're not telling them a damn thing. You'd think. I don't know, out of the blue, uh, that you'd at least want to cover your own ass from you know, just being able to say, look, we told them exactly what VOD it was, what content it was, please don't do it again, and they did it again. How do you, do you not okay. even cover your own ass? They just know they got the strikes, and they might not even have the mechanisms to drill down in the data that far. They, just might they probably can, that, yeah. Clearly, like they don't have the mechanism for anything. That's the problem, though, is because you are supposed to give people a legally. You're supposed yeah. To, yeah, legally, you're supposed yeah. to say this is the part that's being infringed. This part, this part. And when Twitch gets and that alert, they're supposed to forward it to the, the person who you are supposed is, to be able to dispute it. That is yeah, part of and somebody going to that you're, you're going to see that take place in court. 
I yeah. guarantee yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, and, and a mea culpa from Twitch about that is not going to cut it. At, like going going through the, going through this article here, they're like, "Well, as a streamer, what can you do about it?" Well, go read the fucking end user license agreement because you know we're worried about people not understanding legalese, but we expect them to go through that. Look mm-hmm. for a license and music and blah blah blah. Or don't if you don't know, don't play the game audio, which is kind of a no sell for a lot of games. But what's going to happen is if that's the case, if if you're gonna if you're gonna foist this onto the end users, you're either gonna see a group of people who are gonna ignore it and not do and you're gonna continue to see a bunch of these content takedowns and DMCAs, and Twitch is gonna get under a lot of unnecessary legal attention, or see? people are just not gonna start playing the games that have all this licensed music. And the advertising, mm-hmm. the free advertising that they get from Twitch will evaporate. And either way, companies stand to lose from this. Like And we've definitely seen a bunch of bands that have uh and music labels that have done it good and they're like, yo string shit out of our stuff it'd be nice if you gave us some credit you know maybe like maybe in the yeah. description or whatever but hey man we're not gonna come and hit you which is good on them because that's good free advertisement they understand that yes. especially like with the games with the copyrighted music but man like the the, the the lack of infrastructure here is shocking because like ben you brought up a very salient point youtube has been dealing with this shit for years in a very very public manner before i forget and, mm-hmm. before i forget i youtube has spent the past five years educating streamers and right. people uploading stuff that is something twitch has never done i've never seen twitch be like, a, hey nothing <laughs> and and yeah now, now that now that they're they're a subsidiary of big papa bezos's fun shack um which i believe is the new dow label for uh for amazon um <laughs> but uh but yeah now, now now that they have this big old fucking target on their back they should have went oh shit you know people are streaming lots of stuff we need to make sure that we are not legally liable and yeah, they, cover your they ass should, they shit <laughs> they shit the bed they shit the bed it, 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 yeah this is just reeks of i mean okay first of all let this be a little bit of a lesson and maybe don't get on our ass so much because we've definitely had people over the years in recently like you need to put more effort into your streams be in or do better job with the youtubing and shit like that and we politely disagree and say you know we tweet uh we tweet uh we treat twitch and youtube for what they are they're content delivery networks they're not our fucking friends they don't give a mm-hmm. shit about us and they don't give a shit about you. You are money, your liability, or you're making a money, man. And right now there's shit going on that's not making the money. They just can cut you off. That's it. That's the end yep. of the discussion. And it, it it's it's doubly it's doubly difficult because these are the two fucking players in the room, right? It's not like QB's right. taken off. It's not like what no, was man, the one that Microsoft Mixer. bought? Mixer. Yeah. Right. I don't know. Microsoft sold <laughs> to Facebook. <laughs> yeah, right. It's like, okay, you, <laughs> you you don't have an option. It's like Facebook. Apparently, Facebook is actually doing very good, but that's because they're, they're in the nice, nice mood because they're trying to attract talent. So, yeah, that's because yeah. no one is using mm-hmm. Facebook streaming. Yeah. Uh, they, they, yeah. They tried to get some people on, and then the whole mixer fiasco happened, and that pissed a bunch of those <laughs> folks off. <laughs> oh, boy. We'll see. Um, just just be careful with it, and I, I think it's very irresponsible of Twitch. And Twitch, you could have summed up that entire blurb of, like, we fucked up. Sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah we done it. goofed. We we'll got you, fam. Stand, stand by as as we, as we try to unfuck <laughs> things. Hopefully, yeah. that I, I, I don't know. It's tricky because any sort of software-driven solution, we've seen what YouTube turns into where it's... How do, how do we make the things that like the bots will ignore um, or how, how do, how do I mean, we make things? It in, will in, happen because usually, uh, yeah. even Twitch in that long ass wall of text that they posted, they say even musicians that want to play their own music on mm-hmm. stream, they're saying, um, please be careful because if you play anything that will even sound like uh, anything that is already copyrighted by one of the big ones, it may be targeted. So please avoid doing that Here's for the now. Thing, though. Here's the thing. Now, YouTube used to be a kaleidoscope of nightmares because when they made a claim, if anyone made a claim, they, they just get all your revenue, period. Mm-hmm. And even yeah. if you won, they got to keep the revenue that they had during you know their dispute so that was a strategy for just motherfuckers they would just claim everything and just get Mm -hmm. you know a couple bucks here and there and there until 
you won the dispute, which was obviously a bogus claim, but they know that person got a month of your revenue. Mm-hmm. Yep. Those motherfuckers didn't go anywhere, baby. They're going to become a net Twitch. They're evolving. Uh, oh, yeah. Because those and if Twitch is going to implement something like that, they're going to be targeting it because that's going to be a money shower. Well, YouTube got <laughs> smart. It stopped when we're like, YouTube's like, hey, we're going to put it in escrow. So until, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, until all that gets money, resolved, we're going no to hold it money. until the thing is resolved. And then the people who come exactly. out on top get the that money. Cut and, <laughs> Just gone. So, but those motherfuckers are going to be hitting at Twitch because they're going to. They don't have a system in yeah. place to right. deal with that. The, this, this is the liability dodge that Twi- that YouTube does. Twitch does not have such a system in place. So, and it, at the it end really, of the day, I'm going to put it to you like this: If you like Twitch, you like your streamers and all that, you know, you can go fuck us. However, you need to feel about it, but support them. You know, if they have a Patreon or whatever. Direct, direct funding. Direct funding is yes. Yeah, direct funding is the big one. Because these companies will cut you off at the knees. Buy shirts, buy merch, buy whatever. Yeah, just support support the people without rev- ad revenue, because that is... Anyways, coming up next, we're drawing some lines. Ben's not drawing some lines, but the rest of us are. Smell some lines. <laughs> Smelly lines. Welcome to the Chairquisition, where we throw chairs at games. We tell them, we tell you how they work on various Linux distributions, and we rate them based on our elaborate chair system, which you will find out. Uh, this week, we're taking a look at Zero, the game of the path by Thunderbox Entertainment, based on the board game made by uh, WizKids. You can, done on Unity, you can pick it up for about 10 bucks. What is it? Relax with this beautiful Zen board game. Play with friends, AI, or simply enjoy the solo experience. It's like a holiday for your mind. Um, back during the tabletop festival that Steam was running, they sent us some keys over Curator Connect. So mm-hmm. thanks a lot for that. Thunderbox! Um, normally I'd pass this over to someone else, but I guess it's my turn this week. Yeah, to it is, first. Baby. So on Fedora 32, 64 bit with the GTX 1080 Ti or the RX 5700 XT and the i7 6700K or the. Radeon 3900 X. God damn it. I have too many systems. Fucking no. God damn it. Um, <laughs> yeah, both, both launched out of the box. You will have to play through that tutorial. Yeah. It doesn't matter. There is no cloud sync. So prepare yourself for that. Um, but it does launch out of the box and it's a board game about tracing paths. So the controls are very, very simple. You can't disable the tutorial though. You can disable the tutorial. Um, we'll get to controls in a little bit because there's a there's a story behind this. Um, like Streets of Rage 4, the resolutions are whatever you can resize the window to reliably. Um, the menus are very, 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 very bad. Very bad. Um, that's all the that's all the technical faults. Um, but fun wise, yeah, like so I played Zero before. Like I went I used to go to board game nights before the plague times and not, we're not allowed to look at each other anymore. Um but yeah, like it's it's a fun enough game. I've I've played it. Um and I'm all for digital versions of board games because it helps reach people who don't wouldn't otherwise get a chance to play some great games. We need more social activity in the plague times because God damn, it can grate on the human psyche just a little bit. Um, my issues with the aren't with the game. The game is perfectly fine. It is a perfectly well done board game. I enjoy it. If you have a box copy of Suro or know someone, ask them to play it because it's fun. Um, the implementation here, though, that's the uh, that's the real problem. Multiplayer is a fucking hot mess. So Foxy <laughs> Pedro and I, we tried to we tried to figure it out. We got it sorted eventually, but. You cannot mix and match couch and um, mm-hmm. and online multiplayer. We tried that. It does not work. Um, the online multiplayer does not use Steam uh, for integration. It does use your friends list, but it has its own little matchmaking system, which it's great because it doesn't tell you when everyone's in the room, which is doubly great because if you just place your piece when the room isn't full, the game will just start. So there were a good five minutes of like, Jordan, are you going to start? I'm like, oh, are you guys in? Yes. Well, okay, let's start then. <laughs> um, yeah, the the couch multiplayer experience is also really, really bad. You would think, hey, this is a board game, right? It's click and drag. Maybe we all just take turns using the mouse, right? No, you got to pick up your controller. You got to get ready to move the mouse with your analog stick and <laughs> click with the trigger because that's what you got to do. Um, that's not fun. It's not good. Um, yeah. <sighs> I don't, I don't know. It doesn't. It doesn't play well if you have more than three people in with remote play either. It works fine with two, but apparently British internet is not 
holding up <laughs> not ideal. Um, <laughs> also also i i really do wish you could permanently move the board when you're moving it around it snaps back and it's a pain in the ass and i have misread a couple cards because of the weird angle um i don't i don't know the game is fun you should you should buy this in order to play the fun game but god damn it thunderbox entertainment you did a bad job of porting it over um i'm gonna give it three chairs because i think it is worth the time but oh boy y'all gotta fix your shit yeah and over here in uh katie dion it launched uh, with the Ryzen 7 3700X and the GTX 1080, it goes uh, past 144, as you can see on the bottom left corner of the video, if you're watching the uh, video version. goes past 144 at 2560 by 1440, despite specifying 2560 by 1440 at 144 in the options menu. Um, it looks like it was built for touchscreens, probably because it was out on Android and iOS before it came out on Linux, but I guess the mouse works well enough. The background songs do confirm the, uh, the Zenness that was promised. And I wish I could disable some of the post-processing filters, especially that, uh, radial blur, because that's not doing anything. Uh, but yeah, maybe it's part of the charm. What do I know? As for the fun, well, much to the surprise of absolutely no one, multiplayer is actually pretty fun. Um, the uh, video you're watching right now is the last game of the uh, the three that myself, Jordan, and Foxy managed to successfully play on the native Linux version of uh, Tsuro. It's, um, yeah, in multiplayer, while you're talking to people, it's pretty fun. Go figure. Uh, in single player, you just play until you win a game in each of the different difficulty modes, and that's about it. Or you play like the pipe dream to escape the ever-growing trail that's showing up behind you. And the moment it catches up to you, you blow up. There. Uh, start again. It is very relaxing to play in single player mode. So much so that uh, on Friday, after a fairly... Um, busy day at work i uh, <laughs> i was playing the game and i fell asleep playing it so the relaxation bit 100 uh but yeah the ai doesn't really seem to care that it has to wait so uh. but yeah uh all under linux the three of us managed to uh play the game and it's not the most intuitive ui like jordan already described it's bad it's just straight up bad uh and, but we managed to get to the point where it's like okay we figured it out we know how we can play together so let's just play together and it does have multiplayer and it works and unintuitive as it may be it does work so it gets three chairs but it gets dinged one for the um the bad I ui i don't know i really feel that it should get two but like uh, it's still well, a fun game. There's, Don't still worry, to, there's, there's hope, pace. kids. So, <laughs> all right, uh, let me explain to you exactly what's going on before we get into that. The object of the game is to move your stone all around the board without running into an edge piece. Once you run on the edge piece, you disappear, you get poofed. So that's what's going on in the game if you're watching the video. But how did it run over here on Debian 10? Yeah, on my um, 1950X Threadripper. 32 gigajoules of RAM with a 2060 should be more than enough to handle this juggernaut. Well, it launched out of the box, so it had that going for it, let's be honest. Now, I do hope you like the max resolution of your monitor in full screen. Well, you know, it does have a windowed mode, but it's that resolution, whatever the max is, mine's 3040 by 2160. But in a window, I couldn't resize it, and this is on XFCE 412. Oh, uh, let's see, changing resolutions. There's a button to do that. It does precisely fuck nothing. Um, don't know if that's a feature, but no support for the Nintendo power pad recurring theme this week. Uh, multiplayer on Debian 10 knackered and I'm not the only one, so I can't throw Debian 10 under the bus. I went to the forums. There's two separate threads with similar issues. The, uh, developer solution was to fix. This was to disable my firewall and antivirus. I can't make that up. It's there. Go read it for yourself. Now let's talk about fun. What we have here, ladies and gentlemen, is a $4 Android game slapped on Steam with little to almost no modification whatsoever. You first suspect this when um, 
trying to navigate those menus. Look at that. Way over to the left, way over to the right. Hmm. It takes a minute to get from one side of the monitor to the other. It does. But the other hint is the complete lack of Steamworks integration. Jordan brought that up in favor of their own cloud thing that I could never get to connect on my own end. And considering that I can get a Bethesda game running through Proton <laughs> up and running. Um, uh Oh, that's what I'm saying, man. <laughs> that kind of speaks volumes, man. Uh, now, um, I don't think the basic Unity resolution options and the quality modes justify the extra $5 over the mobile game. I, I just don't because that's like the only difference. I bought the mobile version before I opened my fucking mouth on this one. That's it. Uh, outside of that on Android, it's the exact same game, exact same buttons. They didn't bother to change anything to help adapt it to the desktop on a PC. All that said, I like the game. Kind of like Jordan, kind of like Pedro. The game itself is fun. I like the, I guess I would like the board game. Uh, you get the random cards, you know, you spin them and you toss them on the board and you make some loops, you get some points, then you end up dead because you cocked up and it's all on you. All right. Bad math. Yeah, it's pretty good, man. <laughs> Multiplayer, I got to play with the AI and that was kind of fun, man. You know, I wager that playing with uh, humans is a borderline good time with this game. However, if my... 43 inch monitor had touch support i might be having a blast but alas it doesn't have touch support womp womp. it's a fun game fun game however this is an absolute uh basic bitch shit mobile port because you didn't put any effort whatsoever into it you just slapped it on the steam store um i'm gonna reluctantly i really want to give it one but it it, I, it can be made to work with a little bit of patience, uh, gentlemen, so I'll, I'll give it two. I think we can all agree we like the game. Yeah, I don't. Yes. I don't know. I, I feel this. This game has a really hard pitch against like. Well, why don't you just get the tabletop simulator version, right? Like, it may it may not have the fancy animations, but it has the Steam integration. It has. It is like a technically sound yeah. Tabletop Simulator has a lot going for it. If and you have a Chromebook, something with something with a touch screen, you should have tried it on your touch screen laptop. I should have, um, but like, I, I I don't know. Like, if they come up with a decent mouse sharing system for the multi, for like the couch multiplayer, I think that would have been better than. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> hey, I think just you be just take over the remote person's mouse using a remote play together. <laughs> Hey, yeah. look, look at the map rotation. Yay. Yeah, yeah that, that's as far as it goes. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think this just just pick it up on Android if yeah. you want to play it. <laughs> or or, or uh, yeah, iOS. Uh, it's available. Or, or car cardboard. Cardboard. It's, avail it's yeah. available yep. on cardboard. <laughs> it's All available right. on cardboard. Coming up next, Venn debugs your NDI problems live on stream. He'll even remote into your computer, and he might run rm-rf-no preserve root slash. Again. Da -da -da -da. And as what? this dun, dun. unnecessarily long da -da -da -da. podcast comes to an end. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely not the I, longest I really, we've done in the past couple dude, of weeks, but I do. Yeah. I, I really want to be like, oh, come out as copyright strike bot and YouTube's like, hold my sake. All right, we'll get you. <laughs> yeah, they, they just patched their own Voltron to step on us. Bitch, I got content ID. Uh, but if you don't have content ID and you'd like to let us know what exactly it is that you think about what happened with Twitch, or if you completely disagree with us, feel free to head on over to LinuxGameCast.com, hit the contact button, fill out the form. LGC Weekly is usually the default, but if it isn't, just make sure it uh, you pick that one so that we can get your hate mail right tell here, us, right now. Tell us if you listen to developer commentaries on video games. I'm curious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> Fair point. Uh, we just got one little piece, and I wanted to share it because it's something that really hit me up on uh, Twitter. But I know a lot of people are setting up for, um, you know, at home, like, hey, I want to get into like the streaming thing, but I want, you know, maybe your PC's not powerful enough to uh, stream by itself and play the game. So you want to do dual PC streaming? Like, I don't want to buy a capture card. And I know Vin talks about because Jordan and Pedro, they both come through uh, NDI. They're going through the switch here, which is then magic in wizards, and then it comes over to uh, Threadripper because black magic fucked us. Um, <laughs> hi. So Ichunks writes, "Hey man, Vin, 
I've been fighting with OBS and DI plugin. It's like, have you noticed the flat pack? We're talking about OBS is running 2602. And it's like, and the Debian file, because he's running Debian 10, and the apt is 2203 on Debian 10. Yeah, he mentioned that. Ah, read ahead, Ben. Neither of which work with the latest NDI plugin version, which is OBS NDI, because there was a uh, cat fight between uh, New Tech and the FFmpeg project, and shit got out of hand, so it's no longer supported directly in FFmpeg. It requires 2507, which is a Mac release. Any tips? Question mark, question mark. Big shrug emoji for me, right? Okay. Um, yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I'm just going to hit everybody with... Um, Okay, if you're looking to do OBS in general, first rule of OBS Club, do not use flat packs, do not use snaps. Bad, wrong. That, those are nightmares. That is shit you do not need to bring into your OBS relationship. That is an extra layer of complexity. And if you show up in the OBS Discord, which is the official support, everyone, including myself, will politely tell you to uh, go somewhere else or install it the correct way. The, well, the official way is to use the Debian, uh, not Debian, but the uh, Ubuntu PPA, which is officially supported. I believe Pedro, you're a. That's what I'm running. Yeah, <laughs> it works, right? Just boop, yep. boop, you do it, you put it together. Now, on Debian, it's a little different story. First, if you're going to be using NVN code, you need to make sure. I had this conversation earlier this week. Um, Debian multimedia, you need to add that repository to your app sources. Not like the guy. Uh, can you summarize from a third party, Pedro, of what went down with that? You, you can explain it better than I'm, yeah. I'm too close to it. It, basically, Ven told someone that they needed to have the no, Debian. They were asking, they're like, hey, man, I need NVN code because I got an NVIDIA code. Yeah, they, they tried to uh, get NVN code in OBS. And Ven's like, OK, so get the multimedia repo. And then you should have uh, once you load up OBS, it should automatically pick up that FFmpeg does have NVN code. And it's like, no, it's just showing uh, X264. It's like, uh, OK, did you add the repo? What repo? No, no, I, I, just, I just installed I, this. <laughs> I, I walked back, and this is somebody who's tried to, earlier that day, he tried to compile OBS, uh, FFmpeg himself. I have a little experience compiling FFmpeg. <laughs> but we got to that point, and I'm like, okay, well, in Debian, you might not know, but you uh, out of the box, you need to add non-free and contrib to like your regular repos. In Debian Multimedia, you have to add contrib, or it might be non-free. One of the two, I think it's non-free, you might have to add. To, Enable both just to be sure. Well, one of them's going to throw an error, right? And just take out the one. Free. <laughs> so you do that and you put it together. And he's like, yeah, it didn't work. And to what Pedro was saying, I'm like, I have, okay. So you've added both of that to the repo you just added, which is like, what repo? <laughs> I didn't know which. What yeah, <laughs> at that point, it's like really. Mm -hmm. Ben just posted this great shot on Discord, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> I never, never assume, man. We never assume. So, so but I, I said it on Wednesday. Just please don't get angry at me when I walk out of the gate and I insult your intelligence. It's for both of our benefit. So here's a question. How bad is NDI with version mismatch? Do you want like things to be running the same version of NDI or is the protocol kind of hammered out and you can It's so and few and far between releases. Yeah, you want the um You want you want to you, you want, want version match version. But okay. if you're going to be running OBS, the most recent version that is pre-compiled is from Debian Multimedia Project. It's a couple of versions behind. I'm going to say the absolute best way to do it. This is what I suggested to each onks online was quite simple. I, I did a video on it just to show people how easy it is. Like, even if you've never compiled anything before in your life, which, like, why are you running Debian? Um, just head over, and they have a wiki on their GitHub that will give you a very safe dependency copy pasta, followed by the lines to check out the Git, compile it, and install the portable version, which will run alongside your regular version. So you can try before you buy. Be like, oh, look, this does everything I need it to do. And if that works, uh, you can use a uh, package config to create your own um, dev file and just install it and run it like that. That's what we're running right there. And then um, get you sorted with your NDI love on Debian 10. But if you're on the Ubuntu's, the Mints, anything like that, use that PPA. That's the officially PPA. supported one. And it's got all the hot stuff in it. Now it's got the browser source. It's got the uh, RN noise. 
It's got NVENC enabled if you mm-hmm. have uh, FFmpeg with NVENC installed. Yeah. <laughs> that's kind of brilliant. Um, yeah. So that, that's pretty much that. I think we're going to get out of here. Is, it, is that even a bombshell? I, I don't know. <laughs> On that, on that point, whimper. It's reiteration. Well, I'm scared. I'm like, can you call it a bombshell if you legitimately provided useful information? I don't know. It's, 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 it's more of a wet fart. Let's call it that. On that, on wet, that fart. wet fart shell. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, uh, you can always find us around 8.30 Eastern Standard Time when we go live an hour beforehand uh, in Discord for our patrons in the Creep Show. Come say hi. If you want to get a hold of me, I'm just at Vin Stone on Twitter or at Vin at Mast. Dot Linux Gamecast.com. I'm the stinky poo gas that comes from your bottom. You can find me on Twitter at the burning fart. I'm sorry, at the burning fool. I'm sure <laughs> burning fart is an actual Twitter account. Give that guy a follow. Why not? I'm George Spunk. And I am the uh, liquid leftovers from when you've been sitting down for a little too long and you're starting to smell yourself. I am an accounted fart uh, for on Twitter. Uh, that's F O U R. Just in case there were any Joke questions. Joke plagiarism. Uh, Woof. <laughs> Wait, I was just carrying why, on, man. Why, why are you the... What was uh, Moose Raider 69 taken? <laughs> was Swamp Pass 69 was already taken. In I, I, thought, I thought Moose Raider 69 was... Um, what's, what's his name? Uh, Knight Rider? Hasselhoff. Yes. Oh. Once again, it's that wonderful time of the week. Where we dodge copyright claims from Disney. We're gonna thank our Patreons, <laughs> Vigilant Viking, as our chief advisor. Also, our executive producers: Haplo, Justin, Michael J, Angel M, Bob Star, Rant, Scott, Atomic Ass, and Mike Arthur G. And Mike G. Our our little Nikki fans: Darkwing and Empty. <laughs> our Sea Monsters: yes. Jack B, Dementor, Renaud, Rider X, Machina, and Paul Trugs. Trugging. That's no links. No K. Basil B. Chad. <laughs> Romeo V, Nicole C, Marson K, Martin W, System T, Craig H. I can't read anymore. Mr. Alert. <laughs> Steven, Mr. Amish, Hilton, Linux, Noob, Tom Sherwick V, Jonas, Julio, Drew V, Ryan J. Hey, our Linux 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 that's it. It's been beautiful. It's been fun. It's been goosey. We'll That's see you next week. The entitled week. goose lame. The entitled goose. The cat. loosiest no. goosey. Oh, dude. Never mind. Dinafire beautiful people. We'll see you next week. <laughs>